Hey, it's Ben, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about absolutely everything related to the high-level email builder. So the breakdown is as follows. We're gonna be covering the templates, the campaign options, and an email campaign demo, the email automations, and all the different actions related to that. And finally, the lead scoring and email activity. So just so that you know, this video is not about deliverability. It's about how to actually create and send the emails from the platform. So if you wanna check out a video about deliverability, making sure that you're not landing in people's spam inboxes, make sure to check out this video by Keaton, where he will show you how to actually set up your email to prevent those things. Okay, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is actually get into the email marketing section. To do that, you're gonna come down to marketing and then you'll see at the top here, you have emails. You can also change between campaigns and templates over here, which again is the same button as these two here. For now, we're gonna start on the template section. So this section allows you to create, manage and customize your email templates for future use. You'll see here you have a couple buttons. The first one being the recent button. When you click on that, it will show you all the recent templates that have been used. Next to that, you can change to a list view. Next to that, you can search for your different email templates and then you also have the option to filter by the different statuses then up here you have the option to create a folder to help you with the organization of your templates next to that you have a button here that says new when you click on that you've got four options here so this first option allows you to turn a past campaign into a reusable template so if you click on it you'll see here that if you have been running a campaign in the past you can just select the campaign that you use let's say i'm going to select this one and you'll see the email will pre-populate here then i just click on create template and then it will be saved to your templates the next one is email marketing templates so this is a library of all the pre-created email templates that you can use for your emails. So you can see here you have a variety of different emails, the different categories where you can pick your favorite one and then edit it with your own colors, your own wording, and then save it as a template. The next one is blank template. So this section allows you to create a template from scratch. And then finally, the last button is import email. This lets you upload an email design from outside the platform to use it as a template inside of your account. So when you click on it, you'll see that you have the option to import it from MailChimp, from ActiveCampaign and Kajabi. And then whatever one you click on, you'll see that the direct directions here change so you won't get lost on what to do and just to let you know at the bottom here it will actually take the email that you are pasting in here and create it as an html version email because you might have images or moving graphics or something in it so that's the best way for it to take over the entire email into this account so happy click on create template okay so that was the template section let's now move on to the campaign section so this section is where you create and manage all of your email campaigns including sending and scheduling the emails too you'll see here we have two sections we have the email campaigns and we have the workflow campaigns in a second i'm going to explain what the workflow campaigns is that is a brand new feature too but before i do that i'm going to click on this blue button here when you click on it you have three options the first one being blank which just is an empty email the next one is email marketing templates which again is just taking you to the library of pre-built emails and then finally your templates which is just an archive of all the templates that you have created and then below that again you have different options to change the view as well as see the recent campaigns and then search for campaigns and filter by campaigns too the reason i showed you this button in the email campaign section is because it is actually different to the workflow campaigns blue button at the top here so the workflow campaign section is all the individual email actions that are inside of workflows. So this is just a way to provide a clear way to see all of the different actions that are happening and the data related to those specific actions. And when you click on the blue button here, it will not give you the option to create a campaign, but rather take you to the automation section or the workflow section. Okay, so coming back to the campaign section, if you come to the cog icon, this is the settings button, you'll see that you have a couple different settings options here. The first one being attribution, which allows you to set how long you track the results of the emails and which campaigns to actually count. You can attribute it to all campaigns or to campaigns with products. And once you're happy, you just click on save. And the next option is the verified sender emails. So this section makes sure that you are using a verified or approved email when you are sending your emails out to the recipients. You'll see the blue button over here. When you click on it, you have the ability to add your email and then a code will be generated and sent to you, which then you can add here and then click on verify. And then below that is the sender preferences. So this section allows you to choose your name and the default email that your recipients will see in the inbox. Then next is fonts. So in fonts, it lets you pick how the text looks inside of your emails. So if you want to change your fonts or, or add a font, you would do it inside here. Below that is the tracking section. So this section allows you to manage how the email campaigns monitor their performance. So you'll see here you have click performance tracking, which tracks how many people click on the links inside of your emails and which links are being clicked. And then below that we have UTM tracking, which automatically adds UTM parameters like source or medium and campaign to the links so that you can track the campaign's traffic and see the data inside of the customer journeys map. And then below that we have UTM parameters which lets you customize the tags for where the traffic is coming from, the type of marketing and the campaign's name for better reporting. So once you have set that, just click on save in the bottom right and it will be updated. Final section in the email marketing area is the statistics. When you click on that, this section provides the metrics on your email's performance, including the open rate, the revenue, the average order value, the order rate, and other key engagement data for tracking the success inside of the campaigns. When you scroll down here, we'll be able to see the engagement summary, the performance analysis, the open rates, top performing 
emails. Let me just show you with this example. In the most recent emails, when you toggle it on, pay attention to the figures over here. They are currently in percentages. When you toggle it on, it will change it to the actual numbers. So you can see both views. Okay, now let's move on to actually designing your emails. So High Level offers three different ways for you to design your emails. First one being the design editor, then the code editor, then the plain text editor. To view them, you're going to click on the new button, click on blank, and you'll see you have the three different options. So the design editor is a drag and drop builder, which is perfect if you don't have any coding skills, but still want your emails to look very professional. So next is the code editor, which allows you to work directly with HTML if you prefer a full customization. And then finally, you have the plain text editor. So this is a text only email builder and you'd use this when you want to send out an email, which feels more personal instead of having a whole bunch of media or making it look very corporate with a whole bunch of pictures and crazy fonts or even a crazy design. So this feels more personalized with the minimal branding and design. So in this editor, they give you a whole bunch of different elements. To access the elements, you just have to click on the plus button over here, then the screen will pop up. You can add things like your text, your images, different buttons, your logo. And then if you scroll down, you can even change the different layouts of the emails. So let's say I add a text over here. When you click on it, you have a whole bunch of different options like changing the color, making it bold, italics, underlined, or striking it, and so on. So most of you will already know what these top ones do. But if you look on the side here, you have pretty cool ones like adding custom values. Instead of saying, hey, everyone, I want to say hi to the specific contact name. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to add a custom value saying the contact's first name. Then you'll see a custom value is added in here, which will automatically replace based off of who the email is being sent to. And then right next to that, you have trigger links. So trigger links are special hyperlinks that when clicked by recipients, activates a specific action inside of an automation. For example, clicking on a trigger link could update the contact's information or even start a new automation process. Kind of whatever you set it at, it will happen if that action is taken. So when you click on trigger links, you'll see that you have a list of trigger links if you have created one. So if you have not, then this will be blank. But in order to create one all you have to do is go back here then you'll see you have trigger links at the top where you can click on links and you'll see a list of all the ones that you've created if you want to create a new one just click on add link and go ahead and give it a name and then enter the link url then you can click on analyze here too which allows you to track the performance of the links that are being clicked so hopping back to the design editor just to show you the final one right next to the trigger links you have the content ai button so if you click on it you'll see here you have a couple of different options like generating an email with ai improving the writing fixing spelling simplify the writing and then also making the email longer or shorter then on the left hand side here you'll see we have the plus button which again takes you to the elements next to that you have manage elements which just shows you a mini preview of the ones that you have added so let's say you have another section over here then it'll show you the second action that if you click the toggle down it'll show you all the different elements in that section you have the appearance section which allows you to customize even further the specific elements inside your email like the template like the button you see you can change the radius of the button make it more round the color the fonts and so on and this is the same with the divider next is the custom css which if you want to paste any css in here this is where you'll do it mobile formatting if you want to adjust it for the mobile view because desktop view is obviously different to the mobile view so if you want to change it here you can do so and then finally the links which is the brand new appearance section which just allows you to change the color of the actual link but if you see here you have custom css you also have an element which allows you to add code as well if you want to add code just drag it over and you can attach your code here too then next to appearance we have a b testing this is a really cool one initially it will look like this but if you want to use it just toggle it on this allows you to do a split test between two different versions of your email to see which one performs the best so you have different ways you can do this test from you can do it through the subject line or the actual email content. So if you scroll down, you'll see that you have the option to set the test duration. This means that how long do you want your test to be running for before it then takes the results and then based on the answer, reduces the rest of the email. So if you want to only run it for four hours, then just select it. And then below that you have variations. How many different options do you want to be tested against each other? In this case, we're going to have two options only. And then below that we have the test size. This means that the test is going to go on for 50% of the list before it gives you the result, which then takes the winner and then produces it to the rest of the 50% of the list. So if you toggle down to, let's say 30%, that means 15% will be tested in version A as well as 15% being tested in version B. And again, based on the answer, it will produce to the rest of the 70%. And below that, you have these subject variations. This is what we'll actually be testing against. In the first subject line, we're just going to say hello. But in the second subject line, we're going to say hi. And we want to see which one performs best based off of these two. And the winner of these two will be sent out to the rest of the 70% of the list. And then you can set the winning criteria, whether that be the open rate or the click rate. So we're going to say that version A gets more points or version B gets more points based off of people opening the email or taking action email. And then also, if you need help writing your subject lines, you can also use content AI to do so. But if we come up and we, we want to test between the email content, when you click on it, it changes here slightly. So again, we have the same test duration variations and then the winning criteria. But where do you actually change the different versions of your email's content? Well, you do it over here. You'll see you have an A and a B over here. Let me just delete this. And I say in version A, I'm going to say hello. 
everyone. But in version B, I wanted to say, hi, everyone. Those two email contents will be tested against each other. And then next to AB testing, we have saved items. So if you have saved a specific section like a footer and you want to add it almost like a, a mini template inside of your email builder, then you would have it here, which then you can be just dragged straight across and then it will attach to your email. Just below the code editor, you have an RSS element. So it allows you to send regularly updated emails featuring your newest content that you have posted without manually having to go and add it yourself for the new email that has been sent out. So all you have to do is add your RSS feed URL from the blog to the email builder. So most blogs like on WordPress, they have their own RSS URL that is available to you. So then you need to add your RSS email to an automation workflow. I'll show you how to do this a bit later. For example, like adding it to a weekly recurring schedule. And then when your emails are sent out, it pulls information from their blog and then shows your audience that latest content. Okay, moving on to the next section. How can you actually send an email broadcast manually? So there are two main ways you can do it. The one is in the contacts page, which I'll show you how to do in a second. But the main way is to do it right inside of the email editor. So let's say you have created your template or you've created your email and now you want to send that email as a broadcast, meaning it's going out to a specific list of people. Then all you're going to do is click on send or schedule button in the top right. So you'll see you have a couple options up here. Firstly, we are in the send now. The send now just sends your email immediately after the review. So when you see, when you click on review and send, then after that review, then it will immediately send. Then you have the send email, which is just the email address that the recipients will see as the sender. Then you have the sender name. This is the name that your recipients will see in the inboxes. Then you have the subject line, which is just the title of your email that they will, that grabs their attention. And then you have the preview text, which is just a small snippet shown in the inbox as a preview of the email. Then you have the recipient who is this being sent out to and then the spam score which is a tool which is coming out soon that checks how likely your email is to land inside spam so if you're using words like free or just normal spam triggers then it will obviously adjust the score and tell you so looking forward to that tool coming out then if you scroll back to the top we have schedule it has similar details to the rest but pretty much the section is just the place where you can set a specific date and time for your email to send next we have batch schedule this sends the email in a smaller group over time to avoid deliverability issues so for example say it in a drip campaign and then finally we have rss schedule this automates sending emails based on the new blog updates so you'll see here we have rss feed url this is where you enter the link to your blog's rss feed so that i can pull content for that email then we have when should we send this is just to set out how often and at what time that the emails will be sent out and the maximum number of feeds this is where you can choose how many recent blog posts or items to include inside each email before you review and send you have to make sure that you have at least added the sender email the subject line and the recipient so when you click on recipient you can choose by contacts by smart list which i'll explain in a second what that is you can choose tags or you can choose from pre-built segments and all i'm going to do is click on review and send then click on continue and send so another way to send a broadcast is to actually go to the contacts page then here you'll be able to click on your specific contact that you want to send this out to you can also send it out to specific smart list or you can filter by specific variables here or even tags so a smart list is a dynamic contact list that automatically updates based on the filters that you have set so they help you organize the contacts by specific criteria like tags or behavior or attributes and then how to create a smart list what you're going to do is go to the contacts and then you're going to apply the filters so let's say we want to create a new smart list that has a specific tag so i'm going to click on tag i'm going to say the tag is 14 day engager then i'm going to click apply on the bottom right and you'll see at the bottom now we have an option to save as a smart list and what's super cool about it is that let's say a new person gets a new tag in this case a 14 day engager then the list will automatically update so you don't have to manually go and recreate the list every single time then just before i hop into the automations Let's say you have already built out an automation with a whole bunch of emails now, and you want to add a specific contact to that automation. A very easy way to do it is just to click on the person. So in this case, I'm going to click on this box and you're going to see this add to an automation. When you click on that, you'll have the ability to just add them to the automation. So click on OK, proceed, and then choose the automation you want them to be added to. And then when you click add to automation, they will be added and then they will start receiving the emails that you have built inside of your automation. OK, so speaking of automation, let's hop into actually building an automation. So you're going to come down to automation here and then we're just going to click on create workflow and we're going to start from scratch so this is just a demo of one i'm going to create it where let's say a specific form is submitted then the automation is going to be triggered when the contact will then start receiving the emails in this case let's say it is a newsletter they've just filled in the information now they're going to start receiving the email so first we're going to do is title the workflow call it newsletter and then we're going to set the trigger to say form is set the workflow trigger to be form submitted and then we're going to choose that the form is going to be 
be going to be join the daily dominator. Then we're going to click on save trigger. And now what we're going to do is send a welcome email. So we're going to click on the plus and we're going to add an action. So we're going to say here, email, say send email. And then you have the option to type out an email yourself. This is similar to the plain text editor, which I showed you earlier. But let's say you've pre-built your template now and you want to just add that template in. And we're going to come down to templates where we'll then select the template. So let's just click on offer email one. And you'll see that it pre-populates with the information from that template. And if you want to edit it, you can just click on edit. It'll take you to the email builder where you can then adjust the text or your email. Then if you have any specific attachments, you can attach it here and then click on save action. Now let's say that we want the contact to wait one day before they receive the next email. So we're going to put a wait step in here. Click on wait. And we're going to say it's going to be one day. There is an advanced window if you want to adjust it to be sent out in, within a specific time, like working hours, for instance, and click on save action. And then we're going to send a follow-up email. And let's just say that I don't want to send a template. I just want to say hi checking in subject line let's just say hello now I'll click on save action and that's a really basic newsletter flow and just to show you some other actions that are related to the email builder let's say you want to send an sms with an email you can just say sms here you'll see send an sms or you can then just type your sms and then click save and then that will be sent with that previous email at the same time unless you add a wait step in between the two okay the final thing we're going to talk about is lead scoring so this feature pretty much what it is is you assign a contact a number based off of an action that they have taken for example let's say you add a point every time somebody opens an email saying that this person is actually a high engager and maybe once they've reached let's say 10 points then we're going to send them another segment of emails so to set your lead score you're going to come down to settings in the bottom left and you're going to scroll down to manage scoring i'm going to show you an example of adding a score and then we're going to create a workflow saying that if a score is reached then an action is going to happen so to do that we're going to come here to engagement score and we're going to click on publish first so to do that we're going to click on add new rule and we're going to say that if a contact gets a specific tag then they're going to get a point so we're going to say if a contact has a tag and that tag is added and the tag is let's just say 14 day engager again then we're going to add four points if you click on add you can also choose to subtract points as well based off of certain actions then we're going to click on save now that it's saved we're going to go create an automation and then for the trigger we're going to say contact engagement score when you click on that we're going to say here add filter and then we're going to say that if the score is equal to a specific number then the action is going to happen but you can also see we have equal to greater than greater than or equal to is empty is not empty is not equal to is less than and is less than or equal to so you have many options i'm just going to say it's equal to and the number we put which was four then i'm going to click on save trigger then from there we're just simply going to say that we will send them an email i'm going to type in send email and i'm just going to say thank you for being a reader of the emails and then when you're ready click on publish and then save which again means that if the person has received a score of four based off of a tag that was added then they're going to receive this email over here so that is everything you need to know about the email builder if you want to make sure that your emails never land in spam again make sure to check out this video and if you have any video recommendations or you want to know more information about a specific feature let us know in the comments and we'll make sure to get that done as soon as possible thanks